I want so much sauce on my pasta that when I'm done, all the noodles, I could use the sauce as face paint. Yeah. Hey man, when did you get soup? I thought you ordered pasta. I did. Anyone else out there, team sauce? This roasted red pepper pasta is strictly for the pasta lovers. It's creamy, it's rich, just perfectly amalgamated and smooth. It's like eating a bowl of gratitude. You could just feel your stomach just thanking you. To make this recipe in 15 minutes though, you're gonna need a few burners. Unlike me with my induction doohickey. The idea is to have your, you know, pasta going on one burner while teasing your onions and garlic on another burner and, you know, your blender is like over there somewhere, but it's plugged in, ready to go. I'm using jarred roasted red bell peppers here to speed up the process. Typically I would roast my own, but that takes a while, but I don't know. To me, it tastes better. I'm lying, I, I, I really just can't tell the difference, but I don't know. It does have less ingredients. I enjoy the taste of onions and garlic sauteed prior to the going into the blender. You could skip that and go just straight to the blender, but then those ingredients would be quite a bit more powerful. Also, eating fresh ingredients like that, let's just say your breath would be highly inconsiderate. Since I was using a high speed blender, I also only rough chopped my ingredients, which in turn, again, saves more time. But do you know what actually saved the most time? It was the pasta cooking method. <laughs> yeah, I learned that on YouTube. So normally you would boil water, then add your pasta, Set a timer, you know, depending on whatever the box directions would tell you. And in total, that length of time would probably be somewhere around 14 to 16, maybe even 20 minutes, you know, depending on the pasta noodles. My pasta's cooking time was reduced to eight to nine minutes total. How about that? All right, so here's the trick. What you wanna do is add your pasta into your pot and pour over just enough water to submerge all of your noodles, nothing more. You're gonna place that over high heat and then you know move the noodles around to make sure they just don't stick to each other. At this point, you can use the thermometer if you like to measure the temperature of the water. I typically just guess, but using a thermometer at least will ensure you get the method down correctly. You're looking for the water to measure 180 degrees Fahrenheit and once it gets to that point, you're gonna set your timer for whatever your box direction recommends or your desired pasta doneness. Be sure to stir occasionally, making sure your noodles don't stick. Apply all of these tips. You could even switch out the type of noodle for something that cooks a bit faster, maybe like a, an elbow noodle. Doing that, you could possibly have the entire recipe down in like, I don't know, 10 minutes.
This is like a five to ten minute pasta. But titling this video as five to fifteen minute pastas that everyone should know sounded kind of hard to believe. Therefore, my title is a lie. And this is my confession. Tell me why I feel like the YouTube or Facebook police are about to come get me. This may be the easiest pasta you'll ever make. My wife doesn't like ginger and my kids don't like anything spicy. But when I take this recipe off the stove and place it on the counter, it's like a Tom and Jerry episode. The thing is gone and I have no idea where it is, yet I hear like these giggles in the background. So there goes any excuse you have to not make this. The family loves it. It's done in about 10 minutes. It's good, it's healthy, and now you have time back to do absolutely nothing with. At least that's what I do. One of the swaps I make on this recipe is the maple syrup. For some reason I was about to say maple sugar. I swap that out for brown sugar rather than like agave. Now agave tastes good in the recipe, but I like the way the molasses from the brown sugar kind of just syncs up with the other flavors. Also, if you're looking for more of like a, a thicker sauce, something that does a lot of coating, then you can add just a teeny bit of cornstarch or arrowroot powder. I would probably go with like a half of a teaspoon or something in that nature in order to get a thicker sauce if that's what you're into. With these noodles, I don't see a need to make like a thicker sauce because they soak up literally everything. Like a bank account with overdraft fees. I actually cook the noodles just about one minute under the recommendation, which usually is somewhere between three or four minutes. The reason I do it is because I'm going to keep the noodles heated basically when I toss it into the sauce. So I don't wanna overcook it. And this prevents me from basically doing that. I didn't mention this in the last segment, but you could definitely use gluten-free pasta if that's within your dietary needs. Other pastas I love to add that, you know, beef up the protein value is like a, a lentil pasta or, you know, like a black bean one. Like those pastas are incredible to just add to something like this to one, be gluten free, but also to, you know, really beef up the nutritional value within the recipe. Both recipes are linked in the description below. Make sure to share this video with friends, family, cousins, coworkers who you don't really like. Sharing is caring, so that coworker will warm up to you. Maybe, it's not guaranteed. Want more inspiration? Check out my last video by clicking here. It's gonna pop up somewhere on the screen. Thank you so much for the support. Till next time, believe in good. <laughs> Peace.